me afterwards. I'll be happy to talk to you about it. And um, if you if you want to have uh, confirmation of how I responded, I'll show you the text. I've got no problem with that. And I'm not going to think you're calling me a liar or wanting to know. So it, it, it's fine. Uh, but if, I, if you have any questions or concerns moving forward, please feel free to let me know. Other than that, as far as I'm concerned, it's a done issue. It's a, it's a done issue. It's a dead issue. And um, it, if something ever comes up on property, I'll take care of it. Um, so, but now that everybody is aware of it, I will, I will not handle it alone. So, if I come to you and say, "Hey, I need you," just, just come with me. I need you. All right, and that way we can handle it uh, properly. All right. Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter number one. Second Peter chapter. I'm sorry, chapter number two. What am I doing? What am I doing? I wrote the wrong number down there, but I went down here in my verse, and it's chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Listen to me. Yes, we're gonna fit we're gonna finish this up. <laughs> my wife told me, said, You're not gonna get to it. I said, I will. I was gonna get to it. Uh, that did take a little longer than I was expecting, but I did want it to be thorough uh, so that everybody understood where I stood on that. Second Peter chapter number one, verse number five, you found his place. Let's stand together, all who can and will. And I'm not going to give any um, any background as to where we have been. I'm not going to review this tonight. We're just going to jump right back in uh, where we were. Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can be seated this evening. Thank you so much for standing. As uh, the past several months we've been looking over and studying the purpose of simple math. We we've looked at this uh, looked at this text now for some time, and as we've been going through this text, we have been covering. <laughs> Everything from faith, the foundation of faith, and moving all the way through faith, virtue, uh, knowledge, temperance, patience, uh, godliness, brotherly kindness, and then now we are finishing up with charity. And so I want to take a few moments this evening to preach this last point of charity and, and preach on this thought that we had, we had started, I guess it's two or three weeks ago, that's down, I forgot it didn't, it didn't work back there. Uh, on the last thought that we, we, we are looking at is saving the best for last. This was the best uh, one, that the best uh, uh, point that God wanted to make out of these verses that, uh, that we were to add to our faith, that faith was the most foundational. And then as we look through those different things, if you'll remember, we, we talked about each and every one of them, broke them down, some one service, some two, some three services, and then we get here to the last of it, this charity. Uh, we need charity in our Christian walk. Amen. We need to love one another in our Christian walk. We need to have that agape love, brother Matt, in our Christian walk. Are we going to mess up? Sure we are. We're going to mess up. But brother Tom Morrison, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we have that love, I have that love, Brother Pete. You know what I could be? I would like to tell you tonight that I'm spiritual enough that you couldn't do anything against me that would cause me not to love you. I can't say that tonight because that's not been done to me. And I don't want to be correct to belittle anybody that's had something done to them they can't forgive somebody for that. I would like to be able to sit here tonight and tell you I could forgive you for anything you've done. Up until this point in my life, I have been able to, only by the grace of God. Amen. Only by the grace of God. And it's only because God has placed within me this foundational truth of charity, loving one another, and understanding that I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Every one of us make mistakes from time to time. And every now and then, just every now and then, Brother Matt, we might need a little grace. Amen. So I want to finish up that message on saving the best for last. Brother Mike, how about you pray for us for you? Lord and Father, we do thank you, Lord, once again for another beautiful day. Lord, we just 
The Bible says, and now by the faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity, right? The greatest thing of all those is charity. That's why I made that statement of saving the best for last tonight. As we look here, we, we talked about some attributes that are associated with agape love, what agape love is. And then we talked about the gracious quality that's involved with uh, agape love. We talked about how uh, temperance also comes along with uh, agape love because you got to be tempered a little bit with one another. Amen. Uh, I, if I don't have temperance towards someone, then, then do I really have the type of love that God is requiring of us? We talked about the gentle quality that was involved. We talked about some obvious as well as the opposite attributes associated with agape love. And we talk about how ego is not part of that love. It's not selfish. It's not rude. This evening, I want to jump back in. And I want to talk about charity. And how charity doth not behave itself unseemly. Charity doth not behave itself unseemly. Things that are unbecoming of a Christian. Love is not indecent. Bayer's Greek lexicon suggests that the word has to do with being deformed or disgraceful. That's what the word unseemly means. Do not love charity does not behave itself unseemly. It's not indecent. It's not deformed. It's not disgraceful. We, as children of God this evening, we as human beings are made in the image of God. And we should conduct ourselves in word and in deed. Our actions as the image of God, we should conduct ourselves. Why does Satan hate us so much? Because God loves us so much. And when he looks at us, he thinks about you. Amen. Because we're made in the image of God. It is up to us tonight to not only walk and talk like a Christian, but we are to act and love as Christians. Both in word and in deed. Charity, charity not only does it not behave itself unseemly, but charity also seeketh not her own. The root evil of fallen human uh, of human nature is wanting to have it its own way. Anybody, anybody ever have a problem with that in your own life? I want it my way. Anybody ever heard anybody? I know we've never done that. Never it's about my way or not. Yeah, I know we've never done that. But anybody ever had that problem before with somebody? Well, it's going to be my way. If you want this to be done, it's going to have to happen this way. I'm sorry. That's just not the way that, that, that's not charity. Go with me to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. We'll, we'll look here at a few things. Then we'll pack it up. We'll call her a night. And we'll get through as much as we can. Philippians chapter number 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says here, if there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own image. But every man also on the things of others. We are not to seek our own advancement, but the advancement of others. Now, I know that just contradicts everything. 
in our society. Step on the neck of whoever's in front of you so you can get ahead. We realize today that it will edify and will encourage others and work to see them get ahead in life and work to see them get ahead. I'm not talking financially. I'm not I'm talking about just get ahead in, in study, get ahead in learning. If we'll work with others and help them, God will do the same with us. Yes. See, if I show charity towards someone else, God's going to show it right back to me. Now, I don't show charity today. I don't show love for that purpose. That's just ingrained. I want, I want to be a loving person. I want to love people. I want to do my best. Sometimes it's hard to love people. Amen. That's not just me talking. That's every one of us. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's tough to love my own kids. But we're not to see. God will honor those that esteem others better than themselves. Remember we talked about brotherly kindness? We talked about putting others before us. Don't spend time bragging on yourself. If you are what you think you are, people will notice. <laughs> Anybody ever met somebody that if, if you didn't know who they were, and if you didn't know what they were, be, just sit a minute. They're going to tell you who they are. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, well, I met so-and-so and this person and that person, and they kind of just looked at me like, don't you know who I am? And I really don't care who you are. <laughs> Amen. Man, don't impress me much, right? Don't impress me. You know, I, I really, somebody told me that there's, you know, a uh, major league baseball player around town, and you need to go do 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 Don't impress me. He can throw a baseball. Woo-hoo. Yay. I'm a tip for you. But I don't need to hear about how good you are. I'd rather just be able to lift you up instead of you lifting yourself up. Amen. Don't spend time, like I said, bragging. Love and esteem others as an encouragement to them in the Lord. So <clears throat> your ego can be a problem, but evil, evil is not part of uh, this, this type of love. Neither it's, it's not sinful and it's not retaliatory. Let me explain what I mean. Go to 1 Corinthians 13, 5. <clears throat> this will help us if we get a hold of it, all right? I've met people before who when they told me in the church and they told me that somebody had fallen into sin or somebody walked into sin or somebody was dealing with this type of sin, when they told me, they always told me with a smile on their face. That's wicked, y'all. That's wicked looking for somebody to fall. You know why You know why people do that? Let's just get dog out. Let's sit on the front porch and talk about it for just a minute. You know why people do that? Look for somebody else to fall. It makes them feel better about themselves. That ought not be the case, y'all. I, I, when, I, when I tell you this, these are people that I used to go to church with, and I've sat with, I've ministered with, and I've talked with, and they come and say, oh, so-and-so, oh, so-and-so, slip back off into this, slip back off in that, run around them. That ought to break your heart if somebody's yes. running around on their spouse. That ought to break your heart if somebody slipped back off into drugs now. That ought to break your heart if, if somebody is doing something contrary to this Bible. That ought to break your heart and not say, ah, look what happened to them. Charity there. There's no love there. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 5, everybody there? Yeah. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Look at verse 6. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Back in verse number 5, the Bible says it's not easily provoked. Not allow things to get under your skin or stir up anger in you. <clears throat> Hard to look up after that one, ain't it? <laughs> look around most everybody's looking down. Like, oh, I don't want to look up after that one. You mean I gotta keep things from getting under my skin? I got I gotta ask God to help me not let things bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Because here's the deal, Brother Matt. If I do something 
whatever gets under your skin or whatever manifests in anything, we still have fellowship. Because it seems that you love me and forgive me through that. However, if I do something to you and it cuts so deep, now we've lost fellowship because you'll never be able to forgive me no matter what I do. Can I just preach for a minute? When somebody's gotten that bitter and that, that goes that far down the line, they're never going to receive it outside of accepting Christ as their Savior. Uh, they don't understand what charity is. Amen. You say, you just think everybody don't live, the Bible's lost. You know what the Bible says? I mean, I just, I just tell I just Brother Tom, this stuff's not hard. It's just it is pretty simple. Where we mess it up because we think we ought to make it this way or that way. Yeah. That's where it gets all kinds of messed up. We, we, we mess, mess everything up. But it's not easily provoked. The meaning of the phrase in the Greek is the man who is under the influence of love is not prone to be violent and angry. He's not prone to have a sharp tongue. He's not prone to be sharp-tempered. Charity thinketh no evil, the Bible says. The idea of the word thinking no evil is that he doesn't hold grudges. Now, I know that can be a sore spot for the Baptist. That can be a sore spot for everybody. Not to hold grudges. But if I am building on myself, adding to this faith, charity, we can't hold grudges. But if even if I, if you do something, I'll still be able to shake your hand and say, I love you. If I can promise you this, I don't know of anything in the world, and I'll make it to me, it's maybe different to you, I don't know of anything in the world that would cause me to stop loving those two right there. Is that a familial type relationship? Of course it is with my kids. Is this a familial type relationship? Of course it is with my grandkids. Amen. Amen. Charity also thinketh no evil, according to verse number 5, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, thinketh no evil. It has the idea of holding grudges or getting even. Charity rejoiceth not in iniquity. Iniquity, what is iniquity? Iniquity is wrongfulness. It's a, a, a wrongfulness of character, life, or act. Iniquity, or being unjust or unrighteous, flat out just being wrong. This indicates the idea of rejoicing in falsehood. Sin. Love never, has never, and will never take satisfaction in somebody who needs sin. Remember, I said that just a few minutes ago. I had, I had people I used to go to church with that they would all but rejoice that somebody else had messed up. That's a special kind of wickedness, y'all, that I, I don't know how to deal with. Brother Peter, if I was to find out that you had stepped off and walked off into some kind of great sin, I would never, I wouldn't, wouldn't be have charity if I was to go say, Brother Mike Swope, you believe that Peter Taylor did this? Man, I can't believe. I thought, I thought everybody was good with him. You believe he done that? I can't believe he did that. Well, I guess that's one more Sunday school teacher position for me. excited about that because if pastor fails, oh, then I can live. I, I can live up to that. I'm not the measuring stick. Right, right, right. Right. These Sunday school teachers, they're not the measuring stick. If they fail, it's because they're humans. Yeah, right. They'll get dealt with. God will deal with them. The church will deal with them. They'll get right and we move on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the biblical way of Well, what about a member of the church? Well, you're held to the same standard as the pastor is. Right. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. Every one of us, Brother Larry, we are to uh, stay away from all appearances of evil. Yes. Stay away from it. As a member of the church, it is our job to stay away from it. Not to be excited when somebody's in it. Because we're not showing the charity. 
made mention of this before, and I, I, I wish it was not the case, but I know for a fact from just my life of being saved, there are people that look for Christians to fall. Anybody's been saved for very long, understand? Mm -hmm. No different. No different than being on a job. And somebody not like you on the job, they want to see you get in trouble. Right? I told y'all I had a boss man one time that told me, he said, my goal is to make you start smoking again. Mm -hmm. So I told him I'd been quit for some time. For, uh, I think at that point I'd only been quit for a few months. But no, I've been quit a little over a year. He said, my job is to get you to start smoking again because he was smoking. That's how you get saved. Whether he is or not, that's on him. And then he said, you know what? Ain't nobody live as clean as you do. I can't wait till I hear you get mad in, in court one day and cuss. I said, are you kidding me, man? You're supposed to be saved. You're supposed to be a Christian. And you want to see me fall? You want to see me mess up? That's not charity, y'all. No. Here's what charity is. Brother Reggie, I hear you say something or do something unbecoming of Christ, unbecoming of a Christian, and I slide up beside you and say, Brother Reggie, Not make yourself, not make myself feel better. Oh, well, Reggie's the one that do a cuss and fit. Everything will be okay. No. I'll say, hey, man, what can I do to help? Mm -hmm. The Bible says not to let any corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Not to offend someone else. It's something I can do. That's charity. That's what charity is all about, y'all. That's what love really is. It rejoices not in the iniquity. He does not find pleasure in hearing of others who are accused of sin. He does not find malicious pleasure in the report that they have done wrong. The heart of a Christian, of Christian love, doesn't want to give anybody what they deserve. It doesn't get happy when they get what we think they deserve. Obvious. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear it all, bear it all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Through these verses that we've been looking at, through about 15, 15 didn't know what I told you last time, 15 different things down through there that the Bible is telling us that uh, charity is and is not. The word truth here stands opposed to iniquity. It means virtue, piety, goodness. It does not rejoice in the vices but rather it rejoices in the virtues. Amen. Rejoices in the virtues, not the vices. Each and every one of us have things in our life. I have things in my life I probably do that Brother Matt wouldn't approve of. Brother Matt probably has things in his life that he does that I wouldn't approve of for my life. Amen. But I'm not to rejoice that I've got this part of my life straightened out better than him. That happens a lot in churches, guys. It happens a lot with people. Look down our nose at old so-and-so. Look down our nose at somebody and say, well, look at them. Not as close to God as they should be because they got this problem or that problem. Don't rejoice in their vices, but rather the virtues of others. That's what love is. That's what charity is. It is pleased. It rejoices. Mike Brown, Peter Taylor, Max Lodovich. When Michael Swope, Danny Ramsdale, when those men stand up in this pulpit when I'm out of town, or when they stand up back there to teach, and somebody comes to me and says, Pastor, you should have heard that lesson that so and so did this morning. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. What would you think of me if I was saved? Well, he probably missed this, and he probably missed this and this when he's preaching on that or talking about that. Probably missed that. See, I would have hit that. I would have talked about that. What would you think of me? You know, oh, somebody's a little jealous that we like somebody else's, uh, 
somebody else's lesson, right? No, you know what I do? When somebody comes to me, I don't leave. Yeah. And if you've ever come to me and told me how good a job that one of these five men have done in, in, in handling service, I've said, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want to. Man, this church this church right now loves Michael Boyenbecker. Do you not? Amen. Y'all love my pastor. Amen. Hey man, bring him on. He, he come, he come here and take this church out like boo hoo, right? But I love, I love my pastor. I love him. This church loves me. <laughs> I know it didn't start out that way. We learn to love him. <laughs> we learn to love him, right? He knows that. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but he, listen, it does not bother me that this church loves him. It does not bother me that when Danny Jack comes, y'all want to hear him preach. I want to hear him preach. That don't bother me. Why? Because I love these men. I love y'all. And I want you to get the best that God has. Do I do I know that I'm the man for this pulpit? 100%. Absolutely know that. Nothing changes that. I know that. And I don't think that, Brother Peter, if you say, well, you know, I really like to hear I really like how so-and-so preaches and so-and-so opens word in this. I say, hallelujah. I don't take offense to that. It does not bother me. I had people come out the last time I was out of town and tell them what a great job that Michael Swope did. I'm not worried about Michael Swope taking my position. I'm not. He's smarter than I am, yes. He probably, break, he probably has, handles the word better than I do, yes. Amen. But I can't be insecure. Love is not insecure. And I've never heard this before, and I don't believe I've, I have to worry about this, but we'll just handle it while we're here. On the fifth Sunday, we have ladies who teach Sunday school on the fifth Sunday. I've never heard. And I hope I never do because that's not for true charity. <coughs> well, I'd have done a better job than you. That's what I say. You're probably right. And that's okay. But that's not who God wanted for that day. And we have to, if we love each other, we have to say, you know what? I can learn something from you. There's other men in this church right now that are going to be teaching in days to come. Oh, I'm excited. I ain't even give them a time to come to do it yet, but they're already nervous. <laughs> That's good. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But that's good. You know what? I don't care who, how long they've been saved. I don't care who they are. If I love them, I can listen and I can learn from them. And then if, if I don't learn nothing, I mean, I, I, I've, had, I've had men preach to me before that were just young in the faith and had not been preaching for very long. I encouraged them anyway. Yeah, encouraged them, Amen, son, that's good. Right. Preach. Tell it. Tell it like it is. Amen. Right. You're running well. Encourage them. Right. Why? Because I love them. Right. But if they say something the way you heard that before, mm. well, this is elementary. Boy, this is this man. I, I, I knew this twenty years ago, man. Give me something that I can. Give me something new. Give me something I don't know. And it's not showing any kind of love. It's not showing any kind of love. You know what? I can promise you this: what God gives a man, what God gives a lady, teaching these Sunday school classes and these, uh, these women meetings and stuff like that, is exactly what God wants to be said. I've got confidence in the people that, that we, we ask to ask to preach and teach. I got confidence in that. I truly believe that that is who God would have for certain days. So that's what charity does. Charity is encouraging others when they're doing something maybe I wanted to do. I had a guy that used to lead music <clears throat> down at Lighthouse. And I encourage him. I encourage him, man, you're doing a great job. You're doing a fantastic job. Man, I, I like your intensity. I like you. He didn't have much intensity, but I was trying to help him out. <laughs> and I said, man, I enjoyed when you made when you made music. Not knowing that God was going to lead me into that position. 
I wasn't, I wasn't just trying to be kind. I was truly telling him, trying to be an encouragement to him. I didn't want to see him get removed. It wasn't my goal at all. Never was on my mind. I, was, I told y'all a hundred times, I was content sitting in the sound booth back there. Didn't want to do anything else. I'm fine. Lord, just leave me back here in this dark corner. I'll wait tapes. I went back before we started doing CDs. That's how it was. I'll do that, Lord. Just leave me right there. I didn't wish anybody bad. didn't wish anybody to have their position. I was just fine with that. I wish that the church would get a hold of that for me today. Amen. Charity beareth all things. That beareth is forbearing and suffering. This means to cover or to support and therefore to protect. Love bears all things by protecting others from exposure, ridicule, or harm. Genuine love does not gossip. But you know what genuine love also does? It does not do. It does not listen to gossip either. Uh -huh. I'm just going to use myself this evening. And whether you agree with it or you don't, that's between you and the Lord. But if somebody rings your phone and wants to talk about pastor, you're just as guilty as the one talking. trash can and tell us stuff. Brother Swift would walk around with a trash can like this and say, oh, throw it back in. Throw it in here. Hey, right here. You want to talk about it? Throw it in there. Let's talk. Right? That don't only go for pastors. That goes for everybody you go to church with. Amen. Listen, don't allow that kind of stuff. It beareth all things. Genuine love does not gossip or listen to gossip. Even when a sin is certain, love tries to correct it with the least possible hurt and harm to the guilty person. Love never protects sin, but is anxious to protect the sinner. You know what love covers? In 1 Peter 4, 8, love covers what? Multitude of sin. You know what that means? It pulls a veil over top of it. Amen. We're not to turn a blind eye to somebody sin like a sin. Brother Reggie, if he was to, something wasn't happening to Brother Reggie and I was to see it or hear of it, it's not my job to go over to Brother Peter and say, boy, I'm going to tell you what, did you hear him do that? Oh, man, that boy flipped out. He done went crazy. What's wrong with him, man? It's just a game. He done gone stupid. <laughs> right? He done gone fuck. Easy. Easy, easy. We we'll don't talk about that. We we'll don't talk about that. He said, well, you can do that, you're his pastor. What's, what's the difference? And his brother. What's the difference? There ain't no difference. There ain't no difference. Charity wants to help. Charity wants to talk to us. Charity wants to talk you through it. Charity wants to help you through it. Charity believes in all things. Love gives us optimism when we're struggling or in the negative. Charity believes all things. Believeth means to have faith. This is telling us that we are to not look at someone doing something for the Lord and think to themselves and think to ourselves, oh, they've got ulterior motives. I've been guilty of this. Can I just confess this evening? Somebody want to turn to Mama's house, go around backwards. Let me go to confession real quick. Can I confess something to you? something at church and think they're just trying to get a pat on the back. Mm -hmm. Wrong. Even if that was their motive, I'm wrong for thinking it. That's because I didn't have charity. But so if I didn't have the charity I needed to say, you know what, praise the Lord, look at them taking the trash out. Praise the Lord, look at them, look at them taking those bottles and doing this. Oh, look at them coming up and, and mowing the yard. Look at them doing X, Y, and Z. Instead, I'm like, yeah, I'm wondering what they're wanting. They want somebody to pat them on the back. Oh, somebody starting or starting, uh, they're going to go work in the jail ministry. Praise the Lord. They just want somebody to tell them how good a job they're doing. They just want somebody to get, get a band so they can go and start a band. They're out there wanting to do that. So everybody talks about them and says, oh, well, this, this person here runs a route. No, maybe they just want to do something for God. Maybe they want to get busy for God. Maybe they want to be serious in their service 
for the Lord. Maybe. But it believeth all things. No matter what the circumstance may be, if somebody's serving God, it doesn't matter. I need to say praise the Lord. Amen. He said, Hallelujah. Look at it. Look at it. Won't do something for God. You ever heard anybody say, Well, they're only doing that for blah, 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 whatever reason? Or they haven't ever served the Lord before. Why now? who have a spouse and that is in an unbelieving marriage and an unbeliever in marriage is their partner of the church that has a disciplined member who does not and will not repent. All hope, all hope and love is that that child will respond. All hope and love is that that spouse will get born again. All hope and love is that that church discipline will turn that person back to Christ. They'll repent, and they'll get right back in where they've been. That's, right. That's what hope and love is. But without love, you might grow tall. We write them off. We send them off. I don't know who in your life that, that lines up with you. or who that is. Slammed regularly. <laughs> I still can't. 
I have a 19 year old daughter that still lives in the house. Do I keep tabs on her? Very good. Say so, amen. I said, yes, that's right. Amen. Don't run over without me knowing. She said, oh, well, she likes it that way, trust me. Don't you? No. <laughs> I don't know what some folks have to face with wayward children. So I feel you preaching hard living. I get it. I understand. But if we have love for them, it does not lose help. Uh, lose hope. Love looks beyond failure and believes that it is not final. Charity endureth all things and will finish. Love bears up, uh, under sustains, and does not complain. Talk about that endureth that's to stay under or behind to remain to have fortitude. Paul understood that. And we need to understand that as well and love others as Christ loves us. After all, this is Christ's commandment for us in, in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. But he doesn't stop there. He said that you love one another as what? First Corinthians 13 ends the way it began. In this case, you still there? Mm -hmm. Go to verse 13. We've already looked at it. That's how we began the message. And now we'll finish the message with it. First Corinthians 13 ends the way it began. And now about it, faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. When we take this best that God saved for last and apply it, that we may have that agape love one to another. Y'all realize what agape love is? Mm -hmm. I said love that God showed us. Remember, he, he was talking to Peter. He said, oh, I'll play a love you, Lord. It was a fond of you. Agape is I give you everything I got. I love you with all my being. I hope this evening you can look, around, look across the aisle and see folks on the other side that you agape love. Mm -hmm. It's not fun. It, it's not. It's not. It's not weird. Nothing of that nature. Listen, I love the people in this room with all my heart. And so I'm not even here for that matter. I love this group of people. And the love in which God has put in me should make me be long suffering. It should make me be someone that tries to lift up instead of tear down. That's what charity is. The greatest of these, as thir chapter 13 said, is charity. Now my question this evening. As we say the best for last, or God say the best for last, how do we measure up? <laughs> Difficult, huh? I've had to do a lot of prayer, a lot of soul searching. What it is, we're brothers. And we have a bond with Christ. Now here's the deal. I will not do anything to you that will cause you to hate me. Amen. I'm not putting it all on him to forgive me. I will not put him in that position. And if I do, Brother Swope, it's my duty to fix it and own it and wear it. So there's a lot of 